In this video, we look at solving problems by brute force. Before you start on the video, make sure you've also revised the travelling salesman problem and had it an attempt at solving it on the simple map given for the capital cities of Australia. Also, make sure you know about the boat problem and have also tried to solve that one. Pow! So there you go. That's brute force. Brute force involves using strength rather than subtlety. Hence the sledgehammer. This is a sledgehammer approach to solving problems. The aim of the brute force method is to explore all possible solutions to a problem and hopefully pick out the best one, the best solution. Now, for many problems, this is just not feasible. The reason that it might not be feasible for a particular problem is because the problem involves searching a huge space of possible solutions for the one that is the best solution. And when I say huge, I mean numbers that are sort of the order of the age of the universe in some cases. And therefore, it's just impossible for a computer even, no matter how fast it is really, to search all possible solutions. And yes, there are many problems that are that big. <clears throat> However, there are also many problems that are much smaller than that. And in this case, we'll be considering a couple of those. And we can see how brute force works and that it is, in fact, useful in some circumstances. Okay, so <clears throat> recall the travelling salesman problem. The idea is to find the shortest route travelling around capital cities without revisiting a city and returning to the city from which you left. Now, in Australia, we've got these seven capital cities if we leave out Tasmania. Sorry to the Tasmanians. And we've got roads between them. For the sake of making this video finish in a useful amount of time, we're not going to consider all of the cities. We'll just look at the five cities highlighted here in red. So we've reduced the problem from n equals seven cities to n equals five cities for our travelling salesman problem. And we'll approximate the roads like this. Whether or not this looks like a real map is not going to be our concern. We just pretend these are the roads between the five cities we're interested in. And they're the ones we're going to try and traverse in order to solve the travelling salesman's problem. And this salesman starts his journey in Canberra and that's also where he finishes it. Hence Canberra is circled. Okay, so you can see a reduced representation of the map up in the top right hand corner. Now the brute force approach, as you recall, involves enumerating all possible solutions. So over on the left, you can see here a list of all of the cities and all of the sequences or all of the orders of those cities. And then there's a column over on the right there of the trip distance. That's how far for each one of these journeys the travelling salesman has to travel. So in the first one at the top of the list he goes from Canberra to Adelaide to Brisbane to Darwin to Sydney and back to Canberra. Then from Canberra to Adelaide to Brisbane to Sydney to Darwin to Canberra is the next one and so on. And these are all the possible routes that the salesman can take. But it turns out that there are some trips that actually don't have a road directly between the cities. So for instance Travelling from Canberra to Darwin is not possible via a direct route. If you have a look at the map, you can see why. <clears throat> Therefore, these journeys would actually involve, for instance, going Canberra to Adelaide to Darwin or Canberra to Sydney to Darwin. And we don't, therefore, need to consider anything in our list of possibilities going from Canberra to Darwin directly. Now, of course, it turns out that the reverse is also true. There's no way to go from Darwin to Canberra. So if we have a look at the right hand side of some of these we can see that the last two stages of the journey involve going from Darwin and then back to Canberra. We can rule all of these out of our huge long list of possible states as well. So now you can see there are actually a whole lot less states. Now these states that we still need to consider, that is the ones that don't have red lines through them, we calculate the trip distance for and you can see them listed over on the right hand side there. Now I haven't actually given proper distances, I've just written hash, hash, hash for each one of them, but you can see there are only a few, much less than there were initially. 
What do we do? We run through all of these and we find the one that has the shortest distance and that is the answer for our travelling salesman problem with five cities. If we just look at the map, we can see that it really makes sense to go Canberra, Adelaide, Darwin, Brisbane, Sydney and back to Canberra. You wouldn't want to do a funny zigzag in the middle of the country. Alternatively, you can go Canberra, Sydney, Brisbane, Darwin, Adelaide. And these are the two <coughs> entries that I've highlighted in the table with a pink background. Okay, let's go back now to the boat problem, which is another one that I hope you've watched and you understand how the problem works. At the bottom, you can see the state illustrated of the start of the problem. And at the top, in the top right corner, you can see a picture illustrating the finished state. Now in this case, in the table, we can see each of the items in the table, oh, sorry, in the puzzle being listed, farmer, wolf, goat, cabbage. And also underneath in the columns, the side of the river on which they're found. So the start state, everything, the farmer, the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage are all on the left side of the river. And in the finished state, that's the goal, that's the solution state, everything is on the right-hand side of the river. Now, throughout the middle of the table, you can see all of the possible combinations of things on the left and the right side of the river. Of course, you'll remember, because you've just watched the video on the boat problem, that it's not possible to leave some things by themselves that is unattended by the farmer, because, for instance, the goat would eat the cabbage if the farmer wasn't around, or the wolf would eat the goat if the farmer wasn't around. So we can now rule out one, two, three, four, five, six of the possible combinations of farmer, wolf, goat, cabbage, and the side of the river, because they're just not valid states. They won't help us solve the problem. <clears throat> These are the states that would leave the goat and the cabbage together alone, or the wolf and the goat together alone, that is, without the farmer. So we'll just delete these things from our table of solutions. Now you can see here's a new table. The left four columns just show the valid states we found in the previous slide. Now, the fifth column in blue shows the same state as is listed in its row, I've just written it differently. So the comma indicates the river. In the first of the rows, you can see that the farmer, the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage are all to the right of the comma. That means they're all to the right of the river, basically. At the bottom, you can see the farmer, the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage are all to the left of the comma, therefore they're all the left of the river. And everything in the middle is represented similarly. So the comma is just acting as a separator. Okay, now here I've laid out all of those states from the blue column just in a circle, just for convenience really. Here's the start state with everything on the left of the river, and here's the finish state with everything on the right. Now, because this is a brute force uh, approach, we've enumerated all the possible states, we've eliminated some invalid ones, and we're just left now with valid states that will potentially allow us to solve the problem. So the next thing we do is come up with all of the possible transitions between these states. That is, for instance, if we go from the start with everything on the left and we follow diagonally down to the right, the arrow leading from the start, we can see that this involves the farmer taking the goat across the river and leaving the wolf and the cabbage on the left of the river. So we need to do this, we need to work out all of the transitions between all of the states that we've got. And as you can see, there's not actually that many in this problem. It's quite a simple problem. Now, the next thing that we need to work out is a path from the start to the finish. Now, there's only one exit from the start node, you can see. It goes across, as I said, to the wolf and the cabbage on the left and the farmer and the goat on the right. And from here, there's also only one exit and that leads us to the state where the farmer crosses the river by himself and goes back to the side with the wolf and the cabbage, leaving the goat alone. Now from here we need to just find a path, we need to continue tracing arrows until we end up at the finish. And then we would have solved our boat problem using brute force.
An alternative way to solve the problem is just to work backwards. That is, we can start at the finish state and work back until we find the start state. So for instance, finish state at the top there, we've got the farmer, the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage all on the right side. And then you can see the previous state to get to that state would be the farmer and the goat on the left and the wolf and the cabbage on the right. And from there, we can go up and to the right where we've got the goat left by itself on the left side of the river, the farmer, the wolf, and the cabbage on the right side of the river. And we trace this back until we reach the start. And then, also, we would have solved the boat problem using a brute force approach. The complete solution, that is, finding a path, is left to you as an exercise. Have a go. In summary then, a brute force approach usually involves going through all of the possible internal states of the problem and enumerating all of the solutions. Then you attempt to eliminate states or solutions that can't be um, or can't lead to the desired situation, that is the goal. Once you've eliminated all of those, you run through the combination of states or all of the solutions you've listed and you try and find the best one, for instance the shortest one or one satisfying some other condition. And really that's all there is to brute force. Thanks for watching.